we're going to have Hannah come back up with part two of her presentation. So what if there was a way you could totally eliminate the banks and government intervention and the Fed from our lives? In this part two session, Hannah's going to be showing you how to pay off debts, buy your investments, pay your expenses, and build tax-free income without having to work any harder, take additional risks, or lose control of your money. So let's welcome back Hannah. Well, hey guys. Love it, love it. Did you love me so much that you came back for the second one? <laughs> Y'all, and, and so actually I've noticed on my, my lovely, I didn't even catch your name, what's your name? Wendy. Wendy, Wendy told me, she says, Hannah, the back of your handout doesn't have the um, name, phone number, email on it. I was like, no. I have my UPS guys over in Port Orange, Florida. I've been using them for like five years. They've never failed me until now. I'm like, y'all, that's the most important page. So I apologize about that. So anyways, as y'all are eating your lunch, it was a, actually, I really enjoyed my lunch too. And as we get our presentation stuff up here as well. So... In this session, what I wanted to go through is I wanted to talk about the money multiplier map. Now this map, this is something that we create for all of our clients. So th this is just what I do, right? I mean, by textbook definition, I am just an independent brokerage. Uh, I'm, I'm just a life insurance agent, that's all that I do. But I am 100% the infinite banking concept. So when folks come to us, we help them design the policy properly for banking, uh, depending on their needs, their goals of what they're looking to do. So this is something that uh, we do for all of our clients. So this map right here, this is really used for debt payoff. Now, not just for debt payoff, there's some of my investors in the audience that they want to, you know, hey Hannah, if I pay cash for this investment versus if I use my policy for this investment, where does it put me in the end? And there's other tools that we build for our people. But this is a free service that we do for all of our members is building the visual tools to help you use and implement your policy. Because when you go back and you read Nelson Nash's book, Becoming Your Own Banker, you will understand that it's not just about the product. It's not just about the whole life policy. It's the process of how we're using the policy to become our banker in our own life. Um, I always kind of make the joke. I mean, hey, if I could do the same thing with like these plastic water bottles, I'd be hooting and hollering to you about how cool these plastic water bottles are to keep, build, and create wealth for myself and my family and future generations to come. So quick recap, my name's Hannah. Nice to see everybody again. Um, I live right over in uh, Daytona Beach, Florida, so I'm not too, too far from uh, right around here. So recap as well. The vehicle that we're using, a whole life insurance policy. It's got to be designed specifically for high cash value banking. Now, these policies... We want to design them properly because if they are designed correctly, we have that immediate access to the cash value. My definition of immediately is within 30 days. So I'm gonna walk through an example. This example, it's one of my dad's chiropractic colleagues and he came to us. He said, hey, I'm in this financial hamster wheel. I got all of these debts. I don't know how I'm gonna get out of them. So he said, Brent, I know that you had that boatload of debt and you were able to pay it off in 39 months. Help me, I don't know how to do it. So he came to us and up here, and you have this in your handout as well. If you wanna look on the handout or you can follow me along on the screen, which is what I would recommend right now. But he came to us and all this is, we'll start on the left-hand side. Policy month, 1 through 12, 13 through 24. Then we have our premium deposit. But what I really want you to focus on is in this green right here, this green. From left to right, 
These are all of his 13 third party debts that he owes to these third party creditors. He owes money to Discover, Chase, Amex, Barclays, Lowe's, Nordstrom's, Wells Fargo, private loan, BMW, West Marine, condo and a house. So this is what he showed up at, on our front door with all of these debts that he has. You'll notice in the underneath the name of the debt, he's got his outstanding balance his monthly payment, the interest rate, and how long he has left on that debt till it's cleared. So if you go through these 13 third party debts, it totals up to right under $470,000. But I wanna under promise and over deliver. So we're gonna make believe that he only owes $450,000 of debt. So here's what I want you to do. At the top of your paper, write down 450,000. That is the total that he owes to these creditors. He shows up and he says, hey, I wanna start the policy. I wanna start my policy and I wanna put 25,000 a year into that policy. Now reminder, that's a number that he chose. You get to decide how much you wanna put in. And you can make your premiums monthly, quarterly, twice a year, annual premiums. You get to decide the mode or the frequency of how often you want to deposit in. You, know, you can always even update the mode. I told you all, I started my first policy, 400 a month. I got seven policies now, and now I'm paying them all on an annual basis. Because, hey, I, I, I can do it that way now. So he says, okay, I know I can afford 25000 a year into this policy, but... I want to see if he did not incorporate this policy and he just took 25 a year and started throwing it at the debts each year, how long would it have taken him to pay off all the debts? So what we do is 25,000, divide that into 450, comes out to 18 years. So write 18 years at the top of your paper. So if he would have done it the conventional way, just throwing 25,000 a year at the debt, it would have taken him 18 years to pay it all off. Well, what if I do it just using the policy now? So let's walk through it. Premium deposit, 25,000 goes in, and then immediately within 30 days, he has access to 14366. So what he's going to do is he's going to take that 14366 and he's going to start applying it to the debts. He pays off Discover, pays off Chase, pays off Amex, pays off Barclays, and pays lows down from 9500 down to 7600 Now what he's going to do is the monthly payments that he was sending to Discover, Chase, Amex, and Barclays, now he's just gonna take that freed up money and start paying it back to himself. That's where you see this miscellaneous account at. So these were these four debts right here, Discover, Chase, Amex, Barclays. If you add up all of those monthly payments, it comes out to 788 a month that he was sending to them. Are you following me up to that point? Because here's something else. Don't just treat your money like it's free money. When you go and you pay off something, what do you do with it now? Ooh, it's nice spending money now. I can go on a nice vacation or take the family out, right? Treat your money like it has a cost to it. So once that's paid off, the creditors aren't knocking at his door anymore. He's just pivoting that cash flow and now he's paying himself into the policy with it. So, over these next 12 months, 788 a month is going back to himself inside of his policy. Did he work any harder by doing this? Change his cash flow, take any additional risk or lose control of the money? No, he just changed instead of going to the creditors, I'm now paying it back to myself. So year two rolls around. Year two, month 13. He gets his premium notice in the mail. So he says, okay, I gotta pay myself. 25,000 is, is his premium deposit. And now he's got 14,8 he can use. 
Y'all remember earlier how I told you, if you really understand this stuff, you will want to pay your premiums for as long as you can and as much as you can. I'll show you that because each and every year that the policy gets more aged and matured and efficient, the stronger that cash growth is gonna become in that policy. So year two, he puts in his 25,000, then he's got 14.8. He's gonna take the 14.8 and add it to what he was paying himself back last year for a total of 24,000 that he's gonna go use to pay off more debt. Takes the 24, he pays off Lowe's, pays off Nordstrom's, pays off Wells Fargo, and he pays BMW down from 17,000 down to 15,000. Now what he's gonna do is the money that he was paying to Lowe's, Nordstrom's, Wells Fargo, he's going to add that to what he was paying himself back last year, a total of 1622. You'll notice we didn't add BMW yet, because BMW wasn't paid off yet, so that's why we didn't add it. I told you I don't want you to work any harder. So. He took those monies that he was sending to the third party people, now he's just adding it to what he was paying himself back last year, a total of 1622. Then you'll notice month 18, month 18, this private loan gets paid off in the normal course of the loan. He takes the money, the monthly money that he was sending to the private loan, and he adds it for now a total of 2544, is what he's paying himself back into the policy. Following, working any harder, taking additional risk, losing control? No, sun comes up, sun goes down. Let's get into year three. Year three, my premium notice comes in the mail now. 25,000 goes in as my policy premium. Now I got 22,000 and some change that I'm gonna use. Do you see how it keeps going up each and every year? He's gonna take that 22,000 plus what he was paying himself back last year for a total of 48,000 that he's gonna go and use to pay off more debts. He takes the 48, pays off BMW, and pays down West Marine, the boat loan, from 47 down to 8,000. And then you'll notice right here, month 27, West Marine gets paid off. And then now we just add what we were sending to BMW and West Marine for a total of 4,305 each and every month is what we're paying back to ourselves. Sun comes up, sun goes down. Nothing special we're doing, just using the policy to pay off the debts. Y'all were gonna go pay off the debt anyways. Year four, month 48 or excuse me, month 37, year four. He puts in his 25,000. Immediately, he has 25,9 that he can pull from the policy. Sir, if I were to come to your driveway, you hand me 25 bucks and I turn around and hand you 26 bucks, you'd be playing that game all day long with me, wouldn't you? Yep. So he puts in his 25, he immediately has 26. 25, nine, but close enough for government work, right? So he takes the 25, nine, and he adds it to what he was paying himself back last year for a total of 67,000. He takes the 67,000 and he pays down the condo. He didn't have enough to pay off the condo yet, he just paid it down. So we just keep continuing on paying ourselves back 4305 to ourselves. And then you'll notice at the end of year four, month 48, then the condo gets paid off. Y'all, we're at the end of year four, about to start year five, and all we have left is the house. Are we a little ahead of schedule? I think so. I wanna talk about this though. I wanna talk about the three years. Year one, two, and three, we put in 25,000 into the policy each year, total of 75,000. How much we took out was 14 and some change year one, 14 and some change year two, and 22 and some change year three. 
So up to this point, I put in 75,000, but I've taken out 50,000. How much is left inside the policy growing and compounding? The full 75,000. Because remember what I told you all this morning? The whole purpose of why I'm filtering my money through this policy is because I am not withdrawing the money out. I'm taking out policy loans. And we'll talk about loans here in a second. I hear you guys. Hannah, a loan? A loan is like a debt, it's a payment. And it's an it's a expense. If I don't pay that loan back, I'm gonna get penalized in some way, right? We gotta start changing the mindset when it comes to loans from the insurance company. So the full 75,000 is still left in the policy growing and compounding as if it was never even touched. Let's move on. I'll come back to you. Write it down. So now we're at the start of year five. Start of year five, my premium notice comes due, 25,000 I put in, now I got 26,8. I'm coming back to your driveway. You hand me 25, I turn around and hand you 27. You're inviting me in at that point. You're gonna cook me breakfast. Maybe give me a hug and a kiss. Too far, too far, sorry. <laughs> so now I'm gonna take this 26 and some change, add it to what I was paying myself back last year for now a total of 78,000. I take that 78 and I pay down the house. Don't have enough yet. I pay it down from 181 down to 102. Then I'm just trucking along, paying myself back, just like as I was last year. A total of 54 each and every month is going back to myself. We're rolling into year six now. Year six, month 61. 10,000. Hey, and I thought I was paying 25,000. Why am I now just paying 10,000? Let's talk about it for my analyticals in the room. There's a way that we design the policy. Like I said, it's gotta be specifically engineered for this infinite banking concept. Here's how I want you to picture it. There's two moving parts to the policy. There's what's called the base premium and there's what's called the paid up addition riders. You don't really gotta know that, but there's the information if you wanna go study and nerd out on it. Here's how I like to describe it. If you've ever seen the space shuttle take off into space, you have the base of the rocket, that's the base premium. Then you've got these two booster rockets that are attached onto the side. Those are the paid up addition riders. And we need those and want those because that's how and why in the early years we're able to pull out the cash value from the policy. If we did not have those riders on it, we would have zero dollars of cash in the first few years. So it's very important to add on the booster rockets or the paid up additions. So as our rocket ship leaves the atmosphere, what happens to the booster rockets? They fall off, right? And why do they fall off? Well, it's because they're just out of fuel. They're not needed anymore. And so the same thing is happening in the policy. Your booster rockets are falling off because we don't need them anymore to keep sustaining us and pushing us to the destination of where we're trying to go. So that's why my premium drops in this year. But look at this. I put in 10,000. I immediately have 13,000 of cash value that I can take out and use. I'm not a math genius, but I know if I put 10 bucks into something and then I immediately have access to $13, that's a 30% growth on my money just that year. How much of your money do you want growing at 30%? Hopefully the answer is all of it. So that's policy one, but then get this, he starts a second policy, another 25,000, and he opens up a second policy. And you're thinking to yourself, Hannah, well, why does he have a second policy? Why can't he just keep maxing out the one that he already has? I won't answer that question right now. You can come to my booth and, and we can talk about it. But think about it this way. Wells Fargo, for instance, do they have one branch office or multiple branch locations? 
They have multiple locations. So can he have multiple locations of his bank? Yes. So that's all he's doing. He's just opening up a branch office. So in his second policy, he starts it again, 25,000, because he's like, hey, this stuff is going pretty cool, pretty good. So he starts a second policy, 25,000, and it starts at square one. He puts in the 25, now he's got 14 and some change that he can take out. So what we're gonna do is take the 13 from policy one, the 14 from policy two, and the money that we we're paying ourselves back last year, for a total of 93,000. He's only got 90,000 left on the house. So he has enough to completely pay off his house. And we did this in five years and one month. How long did I tell you it was gonna take us to pay off all the debts? Traditional way, 18 years. It wasn't 15, 10 years. It was five years and one month. He didn't do anything special or ridiculous or idiotic. He just filtered the money through the policy, then went and paid off the debt and stayed disciplined with it. I mean, could Doc have went slower with this if he wanted to? Yeah. Instead of doing 25 a year, he could have done half of it, 12,500. It would just take him twice as long to get there. Could he have gone faster if he wanted to? Yeah, instead of doing 25, what if he did 50,000? It just take him twice as quick to reach that goal. So, I want to look at this as well. Over the last 6 years, we've put in 25 year 1, 25 year 2, 25 25 25, another 25 year 6, and then 10,000 in year 6. So we put in a total of $160,000 of outside net injection into this thing, new money, and he just paid off over $470,000 of debt. I like paying off debt my way. Anything ridiculous or idiotic here that I'm doing. I'm just using the cash values to do it. Now, is it possible to owe no man nothing? I kind of talked about this earlier. For my people who are thinking to themselves, Hannah, I don't really need to do this because I don't got any debt. Yeah, I'm right there with you. But you got revolving expenses. You have your phone bill, your gasoline, your food. I see you guys eating right now. You guys like to eat. You probably go to the grocery store. So you have those ongoing expenses. It's not just for debt. I do this with my taxes, my charitable giving, my vacations. My dad's into airplanes. He does this, he gets all the money back for the airplanes that he's buying. Whatever you're into, we're just using the policy system now to go and finance for those things. I won't talk about this. This is actually pretty interesting. Hey, if he just keeps paying himself back the money, that he would have paid to the house and the condo people, kept paying it back to himself, how much more money would be back inside of his pockets if he really treated himself as his honest banker. I shared this article earlier. I'm gonna go deeper into Disneyland here because this is a pretty cool story. Walt Disney wanted to start Disneyland, but after failing in the pursuits of traditional means of financing, Meaning that Walt walked into a bank and he said, hey, Mr. Banker, I got this great idea. It's called Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck. Would you give me a loan? They basically laughed at him. They said, nah, man, we're not going to give you a loan. So what Walt had to do is he had to provide his own means of financing, and a large portion of it came from collaterally borrowing money from his cash value life insurance. Who knows if Disneyland would even be here if Walt didn't have those policies? What about Ray Kroc with McDonald's? Ray Kroc partnered with the McDonald's brothers in 1955. Kroc did not take salary for the first eight years and to help with his cash flow and paying the salaries of his key employees, he borrowed money from two of his life insurance policies. He actually used some of the money to finance for the advertising campaign that we know of as uh, Ronald McDonald. And speaking of, I haven't even seen Ronald McDonald around in a while. Have you guys? I wonder what he's up to. Like the Hamburglar? Like what are they doing? There's another one, Pampered Chef. This one's a really, really cool story because I remember as a young girl, my mama, she would like to buy from Pampered Chef. 
Using $3,000 she borrowed from her life insurance policy, Doris Christopher started the Pampered Chef in her suburban Chicago home. By two th 2002, the company had grown into a $700 million operation that then was acquired by Warren Buffett for $1.5 billion, billion with a B. I think that's a powerful story. I wanna fast forward. Here's Mr. Warren Buffett again. If poor people would just start doing what rich people do, they wouldn't be poor anymore. All right, there's only gonna be one of two things that's gonna to happen to us. We're either gonna live or we're gonna die. I like to use the word graduate, but y'all can use whatever word you wanna use. But if we live, are we better off with or without this concept? Hopefully I showed you with. And if we die, pass, or graduate, are beneficiaries better off with or without this? Because hey, how much do I even talk about death benefit? Not a lot. Death benefit's gonna be there whether you like it or not. How much do I even talk about policies are exempt from judgments and liens in most states? As I mentioned, Florida being one of them. There's a story out there, remember O.J. Simpson? O.J. Simpson was found not guilty in the criminal trial for killing the Goldman boy, but he was found guilty in the civil trial. Did the Goldman family ever get any money? No. Where was OJ's money? Inside of his life insurance policies. Matter of fact, did y'all see that OJ just passed in April of this year? I've been following that, that story closely. I'm kind of intrigued to see, okay, what's gonna happen to your estate, OJ? What's going on? How about the internal values of the policy grow tax-free? And for my Californians in the room, what's our largest eroder of wealth? Taxes. See, here's what I want to do. It's totally opposite backwards thinking mentality from what we are taught. I want to pay, mo I want to pay tax on my money one time, one time only at the lowest rate possible and then get that money into a tax-free environment where now it's growing tax-free for me. Totally opposite, because what do they tell us to do? Hey, get your tax cuts now, right? It's, it won't matter in the future, because you know what's going to happen in the future? You won't be making as much money when you want to start pulling from that 401k. What in the hell you mean I'm working all these years and I'm not going to be making as much money in the future, right? It's just, we're not taught this stuff. It's totally backwards. Anyways, I can get heated on that. That's why I have my podcast show to rant all day about on. How about the loans on the policy never have to get paid back? I'm coming back to you, sir. Loans on the policy never have to get paid back. You know why? Loans are nothing more than a prepayment of the death benefit. So at the time of our passing, any outstanding loans would just get subtracted from the death benefit. And death benefit is always gonna be higher than the cash that's available in that policy. So for example, let's say that I have a million dollar death benefit here on this policy. And over the course of my lifetime, I've been using the cash value, I've taken out $600,000 of loans. At the time of my passing, the insurance company will take the one million, subtract the 600,000, and then the remaining portion will get paid off to my beneficiaries. So then I'm leaving my next generation all of the cash flowing assets that my policy has bought me and the tax free lump sum death benefit. And I'll tell y'all, don't leave your death benefit to your ungrateful children. You guys use that money right now, right? So no, loans on the policy never have to get paid back. Let's talk about this too. When I call up the insurance company and I say, hey, I want $100,000. They never ask me what I'm using the money for when I'm gonna pay it back or how I'm gonna pay it back. You know why? Because they don't care. They know at, at the end of it, it's not an if I die or graduate, it's a when. They know they're gonna get made whole again because it's gonna get subtracted from that death benefit. Where like if I go walk my happy butt into the bank, me being a female, they basically want me to go in there take a prostate exam just to see if I qualify for a loan, right? I don't wanna put up with all that jargon. Especially me, what I've noticed in my lifetime, being only 25 years old, 
Bankers do not like that I don't have a long credit history. They're looking at a whole bunch of other stuff, but they're not looking at the stuff that's actually really important. Even though I have a great credit score doing all this, I still have a long credit history. But I don't gotta rely on banks. Because you know what I actually do? Within the Kessler family banking system, we have 28 policies. 28 policies within our system. So what dad does for the kids, we call him the bank of dad. I'll go to the bank of dad and I'll borrow money. I don't recommend him because he charges 13% interest, but honey, it's just business, right? So I, me, my younger brother, and my older brother, we will go and borrow money from dad. Here's what's happening. He charges us that 13% interest. If mom and dad were to pass at the age of 65, there's gonna be $32 million that's gonna get paid out to us kids. So what he does is he says, hey, borrow from me. Borrow from me because what's gonna happen is all of the interest payments that you have paid me during my lifetime and you've been making my life greater and greater during my living years, I'm gonna make sure that I give that back to you when I'm no longer here. So for example, if let's say I pay dad back $600,000 in interest, Sean does 500,000, Zach does 400,000. He's gonna pay that back to us first. Hannah gets six, Sean gets five, Zach gets four. And then whatever remaining portion is left of the death benefit, that's what's gonna get divvied up between all of the kids. Keeping it in the family, right? Because if I don't do it this way, who's getting all my money? The bankers, the government, that's what Nelson Nash would say. All right, this is not the only reason we're doing this, but maybe one of the reasons why. Got sound? Freaking bear. That didn't hit us hard. I'm going back. I want to be a billionaire, so freaking bad. Buy all of the things I never had. So, again, I did notice, as I mentioned as I got up here, I know in the back you guys don't have my handout here. <laughs> this is one of my older copies. But if this is something that you want to chat about, we have our booth here today. Jason is in the back of the room. Hand Jason your contact info if you want to chat with him. You can also, the top left QR code up there, that takes you right to our scheduling calendar link with a money mentor on the team. Everybody on my team, we practice what we preach. I mean, I don't allow anybody on the team that does not practice this. It's a lifestyle. And then if you know somebody that should have been here to see this powerful information, you got the recorded presentation up there as well. And then, hey, if there's groups, y'all, I travel all around the country and I teach on this stuff. If there's groups that you have, you want me to come down and teach, I'm, I'm available. Holler at me. Myself, my father, Jason. I mean, this is just what we do. It's just fun. We're passionate about this stuff. So I'm done. I don't know if we have any time for Q&A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? yeah? Mm -hmm. Do y'all have questions for me? I see you. Oh, she's asking me um, the tax implications. So after tax money goes into the policy, and then now it's growing tax free. So any money that I take out of it, number one, when I take out loans, loans are never taxable. So any loans that I take out are never taxable to me. I can even, which I just, did, I scratched the surface on this, I can take out tax-free withdrawals from the policy too. And that's what's gonna supplement my income during my retirement years. So I can even take out those tax-free withdrawals but only up to my cost basis. Meaning, if I put in 100 grand into the policy up to that point, I can withdraw tax-free 100,000 from the policy. Anything over that as a withdrawal could be taxed. But before I get to there, I just say, hey, well, I've withdrew all that I can up to my cost basis. Now I'll just switch it to loans, taking out tax-free loans from the policy and using it. So, so the main thing is that it's after-tax money that goes into the policy. And then death benefit. When the death benefit gets paid out, that goes tax-free too. Probably going to keep it at like 15 
you made me think of something as well. In Nashville next month, every year I, I do a live event for all of our members. I, I serve about 13,000 clients in every single state of the country. So every year I like to get us all together. So Nashville, Tennessee, October 10, 11, 12, we're going deep into advanced topics. So if you go to our website, themoneymultiplier.com, you'll see it right there. But if this is like something you're like, ooh, this like really intrigues me, we get deep into there. There's another question over here. Yeah. How old do you have to be for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's, at, she's asking how old do you have to be to do it? So you gotta be 18 to own a policy, but you can own policies on your children. See, there's three parts to an insurance contract. The owner, the insured person, and the beneficiary. You be the owner, owner has 100% control and is responsible for that policy. The insured person, they have the death benefit on them, so like your children could be that. And then the beneficiary, whoever's listed as the person to receive the death benefit at the time of the insured person passing. So they have to be 18 to own it, but they can be younger than that. You own it. They're the insured person. They can be zero years old. I had a doctor one time call me up. He says, Hannah, I, I just had my new baby girl. Oh, congrats, Dr. Gunny. What's her name? No, 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 I don't want to talk about that. I want to start a policy on her now. I said, okay, doc, well, we got to wait till the social security card comes in the mail. So, so any, year, any years old. Let's go even the opposite spectrum. Am I too old to do this? No, we're not too old to do this. I covered that a little bit. But I will say that the insurance companies stop handing out whole life policies around the age of 78, 79. I used to say 75 until I had Mr. Wayne come to me. I said, okay, Mr. Wayne, we'll try this. He's 78 years old. He got to prove that the best health rating that you could get on a policy. I was like, Wayne, I need to know your secret. What are you doing over there? All right? Mm-hmm. Health rating, how's that work? So if you are, I'll, I'll say it this way. If you're the average Joe type of person, you're not going to, you'll be fine if you're just that average Joe. But maybe you're thinking, Hannah, well, I got diabetes or I'm pre-diabetic or I had cancer or something. There's a whole bunch of gray area that you can still get approved with the policy. I've had like breast cancer survivors get approved, but it's because they've been five years since their cancer free date, you know? So when you're talking to a mentor on the team, if there are health concerns going on, just ask them those questions. And we always ask the insurance company. But if I have somebody that's uninsurable, they will own the policy on somebody that they have an invested interest in. My brother, for instance, older brother, he was on kidney dialysis for a long, long time, and then he actually got a kidney transplant. No insurance company will touch him right now. So what he does is he owns the policy. He has a wife. He's got two kids. He owns a business. He puts the policies on his business partners, employees within the business. And then he's still able to practice this concept. Go ahead. All right, I know I'm over. No, no. Yeah, good? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yes. Can, it, can the death benefit get paid to a trust? Yes. I haven't even gone into that. But sometimes I'll have, um, like, my business trust owns my policies. Um, um, the business trust can even be the beneficiaries of the policy. My trust can even pay premiums in that policy. And go talk to your tax guys, because there's some fun tax things that you can do over there. Do you have checkbook control? Checkbook control, yes. Meaning, I'll say it this way. When, how, you, how money moves in and out of the policy. Bank account, it's like an ACH. Bank account, into policy, policy, back out to bank account. So there's no way to totally eliminate the commercial banks from our lives, but I limit the amount of money I keep there with them. I don't keep any more than three months of my overhead expenses at the bank. Anything else, if it's not being lent out working for me, 
it's inside of my policies being safely warehoused. Warehouse where? In the policy. Oh, in your whole life insurance contract. That you deposit. Uh, got you. Okay, who owns, who, who, uh, the insurance company. Who is the insurance company? So th there's five different companies that we do business with. Because I'm not married to any one of them. There could be reasons of why I take somebody to one company versus the other. Age, how we're designing the policy. Maybe they have health concerns. I would say the top three, if y'all want to go look them up, I, I encourage y'all to. One America, O-N-E America, they're based out of Indianapolis. There's Lafayette Life. Lafayette Life is based out of Cincinnati. And then I would say as like my third runner ups, I, I would say either Security Mutual Life, Security Mutual based out of New York or Guardian. I use them mostly for my New York folks because if y'all know New York, not a lot of people like doing business in the great state of New York. So that's why they have their own special little home. But, uh, but, but, and that's what we want. We want strong mutually owned companies that have been around since the late 1800s, early 1900s, that have been paying dividends out for that consecutive amount of time too. Don't even get me started on that. It gets really interesting when you start to peel back the onion. Fractional reserve lending, how these banks operate on versus Austrian economics and how these insurance companies operate. It gets really interesting. I know that's a whole bunch of nerdy crap, but talk to me. Have you ever, like speaking of, have you guys ever read the book, The Creature of Jekyll Island? Ever heard of that book? The Creature of Jekyll Island. It talks all about the creation of the Federal Reserve System. It's a big book, but it's really, really interesting. In my opinion, I think we're better off before the tax code, being here only since 1913, there was a surplus in our economy since then. And we're just getting into everyone's business, right? But we won't even go down that road. <laughs> All right, anything else? Are we good for now? Okay. Thank All you. All right, thank you, Hannah. <laughs> that is a whole lot of learning. <laughs> a whole lot of learning.